The idea with whole part whole is to do with how a learner receives feedback. In this method, they get feedback by comparing what they do to what they've seen about the whole activity. So to introduce you to this, I'm going to introduce you to Tim Galway, who is the author of The Inner Life of Tennis. Don't let that put you off. He's training Dorothy in the forehand, and he realises he wants her arm to come over the ball. So he tells her to raise her arm. But in order to raise her arm, she doesn't come over the ball as he expects. Instead, she lifts her shoulder up. It completely cramps her style. And his advice has led to exactly the wrong thing that Dorothy does, even though it was the right advice. So he really struggles with this as he's watching his learners struggle to the feedback he's giving them. His verbal feedback isn't translating into what he wants them to do. So then he meets Paul. Paul is a complete beginner and he says, hmm, I wonder if I can teach Paul a better way. And so he says to Paul, look, I'm going to hit 10 forehands with topspin. Just watch me. And he hits his 10 forehands. And now he says to Paul, right, I'd like you to do what I did, hit a topspin forehand. And Paul says, do you know, I noticed you started to move your feet as the first thing that you did. And Tim thinks, well, I don't care about your feet, but he doesn't say anything. And he just gets Paul to hit the ball. And sure enough, Paul starts hitting some really good forehands, especially for a beginner. And Paul doesn't move his feet at all. This is the beginning of Timothy's insight that imitating the whole leads to much better progress. Complex tasks do need to be broken down into smaller bits, but they must be practiced as a whole first, because that is how we learn best. Now, I haven't got a massive body of research evidence behind this, other than this is how sports coaching has now evolved. This is the way we teach skills that are complex but we're trained not to do that as teachers. We're trained to break everything down into tiny steps. I'll show you some more videos on how to make that work. But the principle here is, if you show somebody how to write a short story, how to tie their shoelaces, whatever it is, how to cook a meal, do it as a whole first, and then give a bit of feedback that helps them imitate the whole better. That feedback might then become a step that students do before they go back to practicing the whole again. Another reason that works so profoundly is there is so much going on in the learner's head that you don't know about and can't anticipate. For example, when I'm teaching somebody to write a story, I might focus on characterization, but by seeing examples of really good short stories, my learner won't just learn about characterization, they'll be picking all sorts of other things that they didn't know about punctuation or sentence structure or vocabulary use or how to describe the setting or how to plan an ending. Stuff that I won't have deliberately taught them, but the whole will. So first principle with feedback, give students the whole as often as you can before you then break it down into parts. A final analogy if you need it, I've trained as a swimming teacher. And even though there's a risk of death, that's how we taught swimming. Off you go, swim a width of the pool. You know, we just tell the kids to do the best they could. Then we bring them back and you say, okay, right, the next technique that you're all going to learn is how to get your arms out of the water and in front of you. And you demonstrate that and they practice at the side. And then instead of just getting them practicing at the side and then doing the leg kick at the side and then breathing at the side, no, you wouldn't do that. You have, right, okay, there's that one focus, but now you're going to try that doing the hole. Off you go, swim across and back to me, doing the hole. Then you would send somebody who was better than the rest. Watch this person, look at them do the hole. Now you go again. Then you would teach the next technique. Let's think about the leg kick, you'd say. You want your feet to flip-flop like this and your legs to be straight. Hold on to the side, practice that. Right, now go across, 
doing your arms and doing your legs. Of course, things would start to fall apart for some kids because they were doing two things instead of one, but it wouldn't matter. They would do the whole again. And then you'd come back and you might refine the technique and then you would do the whole. And this analogy isn't just a metaphor, it's actually a sequence for getting feedback. Notice the two ways that feedback has happened. The student has had feedback by trying to implement it in the whole, and you as the teacher have had feedback by seeing which technique is most important for the students to develop next from having seen how they put it into the whole. Whole, part, whole.